Oh, live on DSTV channel 279. My name is Grace Hamachiman. My name is Godwin Asideba, coming up this noon. Over 15 soon we will explain what can be done to that entrenched protection of human rights. We have details of these and many other stories coming your way in the next one hour. Let's start the bulletin from the Shops at French Line Market in Kumasi have been raised by fire. Personnel from the fire service are currently battling the fire. So those are live pictures from um, KGTR in the Ashanti regional capital, Kumase. Really unfortunate. You can see, you can still see that um, the atmosphere is covered with um, smoke and all of that. But you can clearly also see that people, including a team from the Ghana National Fire Service, are trying as much as they can to douse the fire. Really disturbing, I should say. But we will soon be speaking. Speaking to details on this particular incident and how um, residents or traders around that particular site are grappling with the rather unfortunate situation. And Grace, since the beginning of December now, um, yeah, December, the Ghana National Fire Service has spoken much about the fire situations and mm -hmm. how the weather pattern, the yes. change in the weather patterns can also spark, you Before know, fire outbreaks on, uh, and all of that. How this has but become rampant. some of the fire victims has also been speaking to us. Let's take a look at what they have been saying. Okay. Oh, I've lost a lot. I'm dealing in mobile phones and phone accessories. I was uh, today is Sunday. I was at the training ground when I, I I received a call that there was fire outbreak here. Before I came, everything has gone. Everything has gone. I was, not able, I was not able even to take a charger, everything. But my concern is about the firefighters. Honestly, we have to do something about it. They were here. I came here around 8.30. They were here. But they were complaining that there was a shortage of water. We need to build our institutions. So if this is going to know all of us, Well, we have been speaking to some of the victims. You can clearly see that they are displaced at the moment. This man who just spoke indicated that he couldn't even pick a single item. And for a number of times, we've seen that there have been some fire outbreaks in Kumasi, I should say, especially in KJTR. And I think this is a concern that needs, you know, urgent treatment. Like almost every weekend there's fire outbreaks somewhere and it's very disheartening. People's livelihoods are in there. They've invested so much in to it and you wake up one day and you lost everything. It's, well, I understand it's that someone from the Ghana National Fire Service has also been speaking on the rather unfortunate incident. Let's take a look at what he has been saying. This is the major challenge because over here there is only one branch from the major road to this place. So if we had five fire engines, so it meant that if one fire engine, that was the first one exhausted water and it need to go and replenish, it means all the four must get out before the uh, first uh, first pump must also have access to go and replenish. So that was a major challenge here. There were obstructions all over the place, called for police assistance. And still, you can see for yourself that the major challenge we have here was how to access the fire. 
that was a major challenge that we had very here. Very so that there were some cylinders in there that is in the Yes, there were cylinders, and the cylinders here are those small, small ones meant for cooking. Uh, or people are still cooking in the uh, shops here. So that is what we noticed. So anytime the fire spread to another shop, you could hear an explosion. And so these were some of the problems that we encountered here. Poor housekeeping. The items here are not segregated. Everything that you want is here. If you want pepper, whatever you want is here. So even those of you who are media men, when you entered, you saw the hell of time you had accessing this, the, the place. So that was a major challenge that we had here. Any preliminary investigations? No, for now, for now, I will not be able to tell you the cause of fire. But then the investigation team, the regional operations officer, is by me here. And right when the call came, they started their investigations and they will continue and will put it for those people who want to know, to know the cause of the fire. Ashanti Regional Correspondent Ibrahim Abubakar is there and he joins me via Zoom to give us updates on exactly what is happening there at the moment. Ibrahim, if you can hear me, has the fire been brought under control as we speak? Hello, Ibrahim, can you hear me? Hello, Ibrahim, can you hear me? Well, as we understand, there's an unfortunate happening in the Ashanti region currently where fire has raised a number of containers. About 30 of them have been reckoned to be totally burnt down to ashes. And our correspondent, Ibrahim Abubakar, is bringing us a live report from the scene. Um, we can also see people trying to see whether they will be able to salvage whatever they can lay their hands on. What the fire service have done is that oh, they have ensured that it wouldn't spread to other shops. So that is um, the intervention they brought now. But the ones that are burning, it seems nothing can be done about it. You heard the fire service commander saying um, there are cylinders in and you can hear a lot of explosions exactly what we are witnessing so you move to one place the next minute you hear a explosion from um, one of the shops so it is even difficult for personnel to move in there to see whether they'll be able to doubt it because you can't predict what will happen here so uh, that is the situation people are willing they've lost almost all their investments uh, in today's fire and they are looking at what they'll be able to do next so that um, going forward they'll be able to bounce back to business in fact this place and um, they're mostly dealing with food staffs and also few of them also deal with um food work. so uh, that's how come and because the shops are very close to each other moving from one shop to the other um, was a bit faster and in fact one of the eyewitnesses was telling us that he was there the shop started the first started from one of the shops that um, they left their bridges on and by the time he went to the fire service um, office to report to them and come back his two shops have all um, been raised down so that is the situation here uh, even though you can feel the intensity of the fire, but uh, we can say it has been brought under control. But Ibrahim, it's too early, but do we know the cause of the fire yet? For now, the fire service personnel have commenced investigation. They are unable to tell us exactly what caused the fire. But um, some of the eyewitnesses were pointing to um, electrical fault. In fact, one person who the fire started close to the shop said um, they left the refrigerator on and they just had an explosion from that shop and by the time he quickly moved to the fire service office to come back the entire place has been engulfed by the fire so um officially the fire service personnel have commenced investigation so they are unable to tell us the exact cause of the fire but they say by the close of the day or two then they will be able to at least give us the preliminary cause of the fire. All right. Thank you very much for those details. Ibrahim Abubakar with live reportage on this breaking news from the Ashanti regional capital, Kumase. And I must say that even if you come here in Accra, somewhere around Kantamanto, um, there are illegal connections around there. He's also mentioned on suspicions of, you know, electrical challenges. And yes. I think that in these marketplaces where 
traders take matters into their own hands to make their own connections might be the reasons why we keep having such incidents Anytime recurring. there's an outbreak, we come back to electrical faults. If we have been pointing fingers at them, why don't you find a lesson solution so we don't come back to it again? Absolutely. It's, Absolutely. it's very disheartening. And needs attention. <laughs> Let's move away from fire because assembly members perform certain functions to promote local level development in their respective electoral areas. As we count down to the district level elections on December 19, Rama Smith visited the Kojokrom electoral area near Sekendi to find out the expectations of the people and whether the sitting assemblyman has been able to meet their developmental needs. Located just before Sekendi, when traveling to Takrade, the Kojokrom electoral area has six communities Afukrom. Daku Chrome, Kojo Chrome, Sela Chrome, Railway Quarters, and the Ahin Kofi Boundary Road. For residents here, even though they are aware the district level elections will be taking place in this month, many of them do not know the exact date nor the number of people contesting in this electoral area. Uh, next week, I think it's next week. I have seen some posters of candidates around. Um, Mm. One thing, though, that everybody is sure of is the popularity of the incumbent assemblyman for the area. For residents in this area, they are very grateful to the assemblyman for ensuring that they could drive to their homes. Those days, when I come, I have to park my car several kilometers from my house. But when he has some power, he tried and made sure that at least our contribution this road is true and i think it's a marvelous achievement they are happy with the work he has done so far he has worked on our bridge sanitation has improved he has also supported when it comes to education when we have issues, he comes around to help address them. 49-year-old accountant and also a poultry farmer, Napoleon Ademan Ojo, has several legacies to his credit. This building we see here is the Kodokrom MAKG. The structure was built in 1953 okay. and up to 2019, it was wooden. Also to his credit, is this newly established chips compound? Street lights at the main Kojokrome station by the highway and 70% completed staircase to the Kojokrome MAJHS. I've been asking the residents what they expect from the assembly member. He only has to mobilize the community for uh, communal labor. That's a basic thing. But of late, these days, people expect assemblymen to use their money for development. No. The work of the assembly member is to help develop the area. Napoleon Ajman Odro says his decision to contest for the assembly membership was to ensure that challenges in his community are solved. And I'm quite aware of the challenges of the community. So when I grew up, following some of the predecessors and having been a unit committee from 2010 to 2014, I realized I could do a better job to have solve the problems of the community. He says he is motivated to stand again because he wants to complete what he has started. For what we have achieved together, I believe if I'm given another four years, we will do more. His contender is 50-year-old Kenneth Komi Samevi, who is a trader also at Kojokum. He would, however, not speak to camera. For now, Napoleon Adiman Odro seems popular. The end of December 19 will show who emerges as assembly member for Kojokrum. Erama Smith, TV3 News, Kojokrum. Well, December 19 is just some days away. We'll see who emerges there. But still on this issue, 29 year old Zainab Al Hassan is aspiring to break records as the first woman to be elected as Assembly Member for Finso Kokote Electoral Area in the Ashanti region. The research assistant at Parliament House is contesting with four men. She is hopeful her decision to contest in the district assembly elections on December 19 
will inspire other women to enter into politics at the local governance level. <laughs> Offenso Kokote is estimated to have a population of over 5,000 electorates. Just like most electoral areas, the community is fraught with its basic challenges and the electorates lay the blame of non-development at the doorstep of previous assemblymen. Participation in the district-level assembly elections by women have always been low, despite interventions by civil society organizations to encourage more women to participate in local governance. In the Ashanti region, 3,919 candidates are contesting the December 19 elections. Out of the figure, 211 are females, representing 5.4%, as against 3,707 males, which stands at 94.6%. For Zainab al Hassan, she is not contesting the elections just because she's a woman, but she believes she has what it takes to push for development for the electoral area. I looked within and I asked a lot of questions and I realized that a lot of people who even come and stand as assembly members, they don't even know that some of the things that we are entitled to as citizens of the country. And so because they don't know what we are entitled to, they don't even ask for them. Most of them come based on partisan politics. Others also come because they just want to be going around being uh, pompous and being called honorable and I realize that is not helping us. We need someone who knows the needs of the community, who is also well vested in the affairs of the country and knows that these are the things that every community is entitled to and so the person will fight for these things. That is why I came. As she campaigned in the electoral area, she sold her message to the electorate to give her the mandate. <laughs> Offenso is one of the biggest now in the whole of Ashanti region. But you come and you look at our market and it doesn't speak well of us. It doesn't speak well of the community that we are. It's time for us to come together as a people. It's time for us to work together. It's time for us to choose someone who can fight for our interest. And that is why I am encouraging you all to come out on the day of the election to vote for Zainab. Zainab faces stiff challenge from her male candidates, whom she says are using partisan politics to discredit her. They also use her age to campaign against her, a situation she describes as challenging. There's also a group of people who tell you that you're a woman, go and concentrate on marriage, and then you are coming here telling us that you don't want to leave. Have you ever seen a woman coming out saying that she wants to leave this community? What is wrong with you? Small girl, go and sit somewhere. And then they are going with that. That one. Despite the challenge, Zainab al Hassan says she is unperturbed and will continue to engage electorates and tells why she is the best among other candidates. <laughs> And we wish Zainab and all the women in this election all the best. Let's speak to Dr. Frederick Ejakodro, a local governance expert who has joined us on the phone. Doc, thank you for your time this afternoon. Good afternoon. Doc, so first off, we've already seen these um, candidates promising roads and markets and all of that. But really, what is the role of the assembly member to the development of their area in the context of the work they do? Should they be going about promising roads and markets already? Uh, that, that, that shows gross misunderstanding of what the assembly member should do. Mm. And let me also add my voice to your earlier story about the need to have more women representation mm. in our governance system, especially at the local level. Because when you look at what happens at the local level, much of the development we've been talking about hinges on the woman. And women are so lowly represented in mm. the uh, assembly system. And we need more, more and more women. In fact, it's a shame on this country that we do not have even up to 8% of women representation in our, uh, in our local level. 
and everything that can be done to ensure we can push women representation to about 20 percent including using the appointee system by the government to appoint more women we mm. should be working towards that but then coming to the question you asked you see the assembly is there for the overall development of the uh, locality and assembly members have clearly spells out responsibilities under the local Go governance act section 16. Mm. if you look at that one of the key things is for assembly members maintain close contact and consult the people or lay their views and opinions and proposals and present them to the assembly. Assembly members must also attend meetings of the General Assembly as well as the committees and subcommittees of the General Assembly. They have a responsibility to educate members of the community and create awareness on even national and local issues that have effect on their life. Mm. And assembly members are also enjoined by the same provisions to maintain frequent liaison with the uh, organized productive economic groupings. So if you are in, a, in any uh, community, the, the business community, I mean the local level development issue, I mean economic development is your priority. So these are some of the things that you expect an assembly member to do. Citizens must be, uh, I mean, educated on their rights, privileges, and obligations, as well as their responsibilities. Okay. Sometimes you ask yourself whether the assembly member does understand even these rights mm. to be able to help in educating members of the community. So okay. these are basically some of the key things the assembly member is supposed to do. Doctor, one would say that the, if they had, they are to go about doing education and all, then they need some form of remuneration or financial support, but we know in this case, they hardly get any form of financial support. How do you expect that they juggle that with the expectations of the people? Well, the, the, the challenge is that we, we, uh, our, our, local, uh, 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 local government doesn't have adequate financial support. Mm. Um, even what we call the internally generated funds, Thanks. they are very poor at collecting it. Mm. And money that must come from central government to them are woefully inadequate. So from the way go, assemblies cannot perform the critical role they are supposed to do. Mm. So supporting assembly members become a challenge. Some of us are of the opinion that in as much as you, you claim that the role of assembly member is not a full-time job, for which reason they cannot be paid salaries from the consolidated fund. I am of the belief that even we work at it, we can also support assembly members from the consolidated fund through payment of their allowances. However, the challenge that remains is if we are going to give assembly members funds directly to support their work, how well are they willing to account for these things? Because at the mm -hmm. end of the day, if you are given public funds, you must be subjected to all the key accountability me measures we have in the country. Mm -hmm. But we need to sit down as a country and decide that the local government level uh, administration is important and the role of the assembly member is very necessary. Mm -hmm. And whatever we need to support them, we must do it. Because the practice we have having we've been having over the years, have not yielded the expected results. All right, and we no. must do well to look at the key issues and find solutions to many thank of them. There are too many to uh, list over here. Okay. Doc, thank you for speaking to us. Dr. Frank Odro is a local governance expert. This is Weekend Central on TV3. We're also live on DSTV Channel 279. My name is Grace Hamwa Jiman. I'm here with... Godwin Asidiba. Right, let's continue with more stories. There's growing pressure to phase out fossil oil in order to reduce green gas emissions. This comes as global temperatures hit record levels this year. Well, this and more have been taking the center stage of COP28 climate summit in Dubai. Latest data shows global average temperatures were highest on record from January to November 2023. That's some 1.46 degrees Celsius above the pre-industrial average. 
Experts say it would require some drastic measures in order to reduce temperatures to 1.5 degrees Celsius threshold set out in the Paris Agreement. At the COP28 climate summit, there is a heated debate as to whether to completely phase out fossil fuel set to be a major contributing factor to climate change. While pressure continues to mount on major global oil producers, particularly OPEC member states, to commit to ending fossil fuel and divert to environmentally sustainable energy, nations are being encouraged to double up efforts to reduce emissions and transition to cleaner energy. The challenge, however, is huge investment is required for a smooth transition. For developing nations, including Ghana, lack the wherewithal to quicken the transition process. It is a juggle as to how to meet the basic needs of the citizenry and national development aspirations and at the same time tackle climate change issues. It is for this reason poor nations have mounted pressure on developed states who are the large polluters anyway to bear part of the responsibility. President Akufado sums up the concerns of developing nations. The disproportionate level of emissions by industrial nations of the global north has significantly contributed to the current climate crisis. This imbalance in contribution necessitates a moral obligation for these countries to mobilize more resources to combat climate change. Other global leaders could not agree more with the Ghanaian leader. Climate justice is long overdue. Developing countries are being devastated by disasters they did not cause. Extortionate borrowing costs are blocking their climate action plans. And support is far too little, far too late. The global stock take must commit to a surge in finance, including for adaptation and loss and damage. Ghana says it would require some $550 billion to build the infrastructure to enable a transition to clean energy. Minister for Energy Dr. Matthew Pukuprempe says that kind of investment is possible with private capital sector leading the charge. The realization of the requisite capital will culminate in the universal access to affordable and reliable power by 2024 and economy-wide decarbonization, socioeconomic development would lead to about 400,000 net jobs and above all meet our net zero emissions by the year 2060. In the last one week, government officials have been holding engagements intended to woo investors into the clean energy area. For now, the country has only gotten about 50 million dollars in pledges to assist with its resilience program. It has also secured a deal with the Swiss government to trade carbon emissions credits worth $20 million. As nations continue to look for funding, it remains to be seen whether the loss and damage fund set up by this year's COP to support climate vulnerable nations could be the much expected catalyst to ease the transition burden. As of this week, some $400 million has been pledged to the fund. Will the pledges translate into actual cash? The future will tell. Well, as Ghana concludes its participation in United Nations Climate Change Conference, COP28 in Dubai, the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, Samuel Abujinapo, has been emphasizing the need for global leaders to take decisive and crucial measures in addressing climate change. The Lands Minister, who addressed the local and international press on Saturday, December 9, 2023, stressed the need for leaders to demonstrate commitment to the fight against climate change. To have a better understanding on the back of this, Ewule Sewa, as the coordinator of Ecoconscious Citizens and she joins us to throw more light on this. Good afternoon, ma'am. You have followed the COP28. What are your impressions so far? Good afternoon. Thank you very much for having me. I couldn't agree more with the fact that those who are caused, largely caused the situation we find ourselves in, should be part of um, remedying the situation we find. But having said that, that doesn't mean that we, I'm talking about Ghana, should not also put our house in order. Mm. We cannot with one hand be asking for funds and then with the other hand be engaged in activities that are far from mitigating climate change. I'll give you an example. We have the continuing um, devastation of our forest reserves. 
we have declassified parts of Ashimoto Forest, the lands of Accra. And, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I've got a bit of a technical problem. Uh, well, we, and um, we've unfortunately sorry, um, lost her, but I understand right. she's joining us again. You can please proceed. I don't know where it's coming. Hello, can you hear me? Well, we will be getting back to her to understand exactly what the COP28 conference is all about and how it is going to help Ghana fight climate change. I have been to coastal communities where you can clearly see that the rising waters as a result of climate change is washing away homes located around the coastal communities. Well, let's take a quick break here and when we return, we have more stories for you. This is Weekend Central here on TV3. My name is Godwin Asidaba and I have been doing this with... Grace Hamwajiman, we're we back shortly. Season. Time to try your luck. The rules are simple. You can place bets on any sports event. Get promotional tickets. Take part in prize draws. What's the season? It's golden season. Time to try your luck. Use the promo code to get your welcome bonus. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. Bet responsibly, not for persons below 18 years. Gambling can be. Second day for your red year. Or send it 29 December. The whole second day by a yellow. Mama, I'm in yellow. Yellow. And maybe send a wire. Or send a top chocolate for tomato gold cost yellow Friday. Neither do you yellow. Not sure that qualified about Jenny Chen. No. 2 p.m. sharp. Yes, that's what I'm gonna say. With your brass band. Yeah, they're drunk on a beer and a lungu piano or second day. Hey, baby, I'm very yellow. You're ready to go pray with second day. Come for us. It is on Bella. Or a junker town and friends. Yes, sponsors here. Top chocolate. Lola tissue. Into 29. Nine December, I swear the whole second day by a yellow. yellow, yellow. How do I look? You look so gorgeous, Auntie. Thank you. I hope my date feels the same. Am I not forgetting something? Yes, obviously. Laura Mimi. Thank you. Can I use the washroom, please? Sure. Flora disposal blanket if you obviously are using flora tissues, my dear, because the flora tissues they are soft and easy on the skin and they leave no particles. I hope you had a good time. I had fun, thank you for dinner. Are you okay? Do you want to use the washroom? Yeah. Okay, fine. Hey, broke uncle. I will tell auntie. Ah, fat chummy. I just love how it feels. Everybody knows Acrobato. And if you know Acrobato, it means you know M Punch Homeopathy Clinic. M Punch Homeopathy Clinic is my pillar. Let's hear what others are saying about M Punch Homeopathy Clinic. Who will be careful for M Punch Wana? Ha! Chesa na mi anka sami prod na se problem su wo. Ti na ma wo ho ai dia ma me. Papa pa chese na nyana sam ketua. Na me kwen point no, mo hwe me mogem no mo hebi bia na so mo me duo. Ma me duo me fine no. En na ma won kura me nu. Ko fro kwa na me kwen mo a. Eba. And everything yourself. Me ma me no ajojo. E da ho a won timi nante. And then you call end point. Oma ma nu nura. And then why dia what me asori anante. That's end point for you. Of our brother too. Hello. Hey, o shu shu what che. Okay. A free bra who the end point what does it? I me call you no. Me just say my name quickly, and pass on my name in and then me join us at Bema. Now me be fear for the one day in You heard everything. I have secret. M point is my secret. M point from your party clinic. I'm free. This Sunday on Hot Issues. Why do you think Ghana is so poor? So poor? Ghana is poor, isn't it? No, we are a lower middle income country. It will be um, an untrue yeah. conclusion yeah. to say that Ghana beyond aid is ongoing it's ongoing we're turning around the corner what i'm saying is that their experiences are what they are telling us that life is difficult 
because we haven't progressed as a country. They're telling you that their children have access to education. Mm -hmm. However, the quality of education, they are questioning. No, no. We have the best result in our education trend since independence for secondary education. The best ever. Hot Issues shows Sundays at 2 p.m. on TV3. TV3, first in news. You're still watching Weekend Central here on TV3. Welcome back. And let's continue with our interview with um, Awula Sewa, who is the coordinator for Eco Conscious Citizen. So, ma'am, if you can hear me again, I'm sure you are in the right position to speak to us. We know that Ghana was represented on Saturday when the Lands and Natural Resources Minister Samuel Jinapo emphasized the need for global leaders to take decisive action in addressing climate change. But Will you say Ghana as a country has done enough to tackle the situation? Good afternoon. Thank you very much. And I apologize for what happened earlier on that technology. Okay. I have to say that I do not think, and I'm sure many um, concerned citizens are very upset about the way things are going on in our country. We face an existential threat. There we are at COP28 saying the right things. But have we put our house in order? Have we dealt with uh, climate change as we can? I'm very concerned about the fact that we are not interested in climate um, adaptation or mitigation. We have declassified parts of Achimota forest. We know the value of forests in combating climate change. We know that Achimota forests are the <laughs> last remaining lands mm -hmm. of Accra. We've also passed EI 2462 which allows mining in forest reserves, forest reserves, including globally significant biodiversity areas. When we are doing this, how can we be serious about um, combating uh, climate change? In addition, we have not dealt with the, uh, with Professor Frimpon Boateng's report. He gave instances of organizations and high flyers involved in illegal mining. And let me be clear, even if an organization has a license to mine, they can't mine irresponsibly. So if they are mining outside the parameters, then they engage in illegal mining. As I speak, there's illegal mining going on on the Ophin River. All right, so what, let me come in here. We know that Ghana is witnessing impact of climate change all around the coastal communities where the experiences of erosion and other you know, related activities. How urgent will you say it is for us in this country? I mean, the urgency is yesterday. We have to do things now. We mm. need to stop building where we shouldn't build. We need to stop building on mangroves and uh, wetlands and so on and so forth, because they all have a role to play in stopping flooding. So long as we just do things anyhow, so long as the EPA cannot fulfill its role of monitoring and enforcing, or enforcement. So long as we just behave as if there's, there are no laws in the country, what is going on will continue. So I'm seriously saying that if we want to arrest the situation, mm. true, industrialized countries have caused a lot of the mess, but we don't have to contribute to it. We need to stop uh, classifying, we need to revoke EI-144 and LI-2462. We need to immediately stop the destruction of our forest reserves. We need to stop buildings in mangroves. Right. We need to demolish buildings which are where they shouldn't be. I mean, we can't just go around uh, asking for money. When there's even no assurance that should we get the money, we'll use the money res responsibly. I don't have any Right. Thank you for your time yes. this afternoon. We have been speaking to Awula Sewa, who is the coordinator of Eco-Conscious Citizens, and she has been throwing more light on climate change and how it is heavily um, affecting Ghana. And I think at this point, we need urgent attention. You've as watched stories possible. where somewhere around, um, you know, Bukom and other areas around the, yeah. the sea, houses there are actually being washed Tidal away. away. And, and people are rendered homeless. So when it gets to 6 p.m., the temperature of the water rises mm. and then it, the water comes forward. So people who live along the banks of the sea 
will have to battle, you know, evaporation from the sea, the heat, and all of that. And so some of them using sacks of sand. Exactly. They will actually have to homes. buy rocks to be able to create their own sea defense so mm. that the water won't Doesn't be able to eat to further them. into their homes. And it is really, really, really disturbing. And climate change is actually something that has been on the lips of many not just in Ghana, across the world. COP28 in Dubai um, was a great initiative that would address climate change issues. And I am hopeful that since the Lands and Natural Resources Minister, Abu we'll Jinnapur, was the there, mantle. Yeah. Ghana will get to benefit and also mm. tackle this situation to an end. Well, our next story is also about climate change, or climate change can tie into that. Because today, December 10, marks the 75th anniversary of one of the world's most groundbreaking global pledges, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The declaration was proclaimed by the United Nations General Assembly in Paris on 10 December 1948 and sets out for the first time fundamental human rights to be universally protected. The document enshrines the inalienable right that everyone is entitled to as a human being regardless of race, color, religion, sex, language, political or other opinion, national or social origin, property, birth or other status. The 2023 theme is freedom, equality and justice for all, including the environment. And the country director of Amnesty International, Genevieve Patenting, is joining us. Hello, Genevieve. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Hello. Thank you. So the 2023 theme, freedom, equality, and justice for all. How do you want to see this play out in the Ghanaian context? Um, well, thank you for having me, first of all. So Ghana has um, taken several strides in bettering our human rights agenda mm. within the country. So that's a good thing. I know that Ghana has implemented several laws. I think we're very good at implementing laws, sorry, making laws, but the problem here is the implementation. And I believe that um, we really have to work on educating the public on their human rights and their fundamental rights. Um, you know, the U Universal Declaration of Human Rights, it was inspired, it was um, what inspired international human rights law. And currently there are 190 member states of the UN who have signed onto the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Um, so as you said, today marks Human Rights Day. Ghana has come very far. We do have um, some current bills in parliament that obviously have to deal with human rights. One in particular is the death penalty. We have partially abolished the death penalty. Um, the president assented to um, one amendment, which was the criminal offenses amendment bill, but he did not assent to the armed forces amendment bill. So because of that, the death penalty is partially abolished. Um, we also have the witchcraft accusations bill, which is very important because it's an abuse of women's rights, especially in Ghana. We always hear women are always being beaten, um, especially older women. Um, most of the time, these women may have psychosocial challenges mm. and people do not understand and just, you know, um, lynch them in public. Um, this is something that Amnesty International is very, very concerned about. So when the president did not assent to the bill, it was very, very concerning. So we are appealing to the president to come out with the memo, which he's supposed to give to the Speaker of Parliament to show us exactly um, what the challenges are within the bill. The bill went through a very consultative process of lawyers, um, other stakeholders like the Mental mm -hmm. Health Authority were all on board when we were drafting this bill. Okay. So it'll be really interesting to see what the president is, you know, wants to bring out. Lastly, the Affirmative Action Bill, which also happens to do with women's rights, especially women's rights and decision-making roles. Mm. So this is something that has been in Parliament since 2011, eh? yeah. <laughs> 12 years now. And um, we are really pushing with other stakeholders mm. to ensure that uh, the bill is passed. Okay. Speaker of Parliament has assured that, that there's a certificate of urgency on the bill and it will receive the attention it needs. I would like to just take one, one more point 
Today is not just Human Rights Day, it's also the last day of 16 days of activism against gender-based oh, violence. Yeah. And that is extremely important within the human rights mm. um, framework. Okay. So yes, Ghana has come far, but we have a lot of work to do as citizens. All right, Genevieve, thank you for speaking to us. She is a country director of Amnesty International. This is Weekend Central on TV3, also live on DSTV channel 279. We have more after this break. Stay with us. Prepare to embark on an epic journey. The stage is set, the lights are on, and the stakes have never been higher. Welcome to Mentor Season 12, the ultimate musical reality showdown. Where 16 extraordinary talents will face off in a battle of passion, creativity, and showmanship. is brought to you by Heaven Black Insecticide Spray and Mosquito Coil and Napa Foods Sense Body Spray Bell Ice Vitamilk Dragnet Pepsodent Charcoal and Lemon Infused Formula and Pepsodent Natural Herbal Formula Darling Lemon Drink through Telly Calipo Welcome to the brand new season of Drama in the Kitchen. This week, we have a very interesting dilemma. Our gentleman in Shuraba is going to be allowing two special ladies, his current girlfriend, Regina, and his ex, Elizabeth. He but says I'm troublesome, but I'm not. You are not. I, nag I was nagging for a reason. Too you worried don't like days. him. So, like, why are you fighting? Her constant calling Consistently. shows that she really wants to come back. This is going to be quite interesting because we have Elizabeth who is still chasing a comeback and Regina who is ready to secure her spot. So it's a big bite. Open up. Okay. Which lady will be the one to dazzle his taste buds? We'll find out this week on Drama in the Kitchen. Drama in the Kitchen shows Sundays at 4 p.m. on TV3. Brought to you by Tasty Talk. Welcome back. This is Weekend Central on TV3. Let's do some sports now. Our Nations FC extended their impressive run of form with a fifth consecutive win, defeating league leaders Indiana FC 2-1 at the Dr. Che Complex in Abrancasti on Saturday. The victory sees Nations move up to fourth place, putting pressure on second place in Swatreman, who are level on points with Indiana but have a game in hand. Ediana remain top of the table, but their lead is now under threat from Insua Treman, who was struggling Karela United today. To the corner, and that's a goal line clearance. Eventually, the pull one back. It is just to Tosuche. I told you about Tosuche's intention to make an instant impact from the bench, and oh yes, he's done it. Ojo tried to clear it off the line. Well, the two most successful clubs in Ghana, Hearts of Oak and Kumasi Asante Kotoko, will take the spotlight today when the team select horns in the Ghana Premier League. The two teams are facing off in the first super clash of the 2023-24 season. Kelvin Uswan Sa from the Sports Desk joins us live from Kumasi. So we've seen this clash over the years. What makes this fixture unique from the previous ones aside has been played in a different season. 
Well, thank you so much. And uh, here in Kumasi, everyone is ready for this big game. It's not too unique, but it's unique because it's come a week earlier than scheduled. It was expected to be played on the 17th of December, but the calendar had to be readjusted. And had to folk for the first time have selected the Babaya Sports Stadium as their home grounds, which conventionally should be the home grounds of Kumasi as Sante Kotoko. Well, the two clubs are coming into this game with had to folk with a very poor form, a draw, and then two Two losses in the last three games for Santi Kotoko. They've managed to record three victories on a bounce and are in high spirits for this particular game. Had to forget coming into this game without a head coach after they mutually parted ways with uh, Martino Scoopman three weeks ago for Santi Kotoko. Prosper Nateogum after his interaction with CAF to enhance his coaching education status uh, for the Ghana Football Association has returned and is going to form partnership with David O'Clue for this game. So, not too unique, but it's unique because it's the biggest football game on the Ghanaian football calendar. Obviously, Kelvin, tell us how preparations have been so far, knowing it is Hearts playing as the host in the de facto home grounds of Kotoko. Preparing Not for. any major challenges have been recorded here in Kumasi. The pitch is ready uh, this morning. You could see everything. Arrangements have been done. Have to folk have put uh, their billboards and everything. Security arrangements, everything in place. We spoke earlier to the Director General of the National Sports Authority, Iman Okujapia, who alluded to the fact that he hasn't encountered any problem and the match is going to come on smoothly. I think so far, so good. Uh, as a folk and Kotoko, I've been with them for several meetings, including the security services. And I think the understanding between the two teams is massive. For now, I think so far, so, so good. And then the security, they are already here. And they are going to be stationed to protect the fans, the players, the officials, and then the property as well. So, Calvin, what is the general mood of the two sets of fans with a few hours to kick off? Well, the general mode here in Kumase is that Kotoko fans are brimming with a lot of confidence because their team is on a three-match winning streak for Hearts of Folk fans. They haven't been too optimistic, but they know that when they play against Asante Kotoko, it doesn't matter how poor their form has been. We had, a, we had an interaction with a couple of the fans here, and this is what they had to say earlier. It's going to be a nice game. Um, of course, we are the visitors uh, to Hearts of Folk, and um, we, we respect that as such. But let me tell you, at the end of the 90 minutes, the three points will remain here in Kumasi. Well, that is nice prediction. Your prediction is there. Oh, I think it's going to be a 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 what I say? I couldn't do that first. I don't go first time. I don't go for. I'm about to be marshal. The moment by the moment I don't go for, I'm a fool. We're going to make you Yes, sir. I'm a man in jail. Let's start tomorrow. But we're first fifteen to twenty minutes. No, let me be very cool. Let me be careful. I'm a man. I'm quite a lot of supporters. You know, yeah. So, Calvin, also answer joining us from Abayara Sports Stadium. The sports team will bring you all you need to know about this big game because any time Kotoko and Hearts meet. You know it is a big deal. Stay with us. We'll bring you all that you need to know. God and Kotoko and Hearts are meeting once again. What yeah, are your thoughts? I am actually looking forward to it, okay. if I should say. Okay. Um, no interest at the moment. <laughs> yeah, but since it's Why a local not? match, I will just enjoy watching it. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny though? <laughs> no interest at the moment. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's continue with some stories. And this particular time around, we are bringing you my favorite part of the news, which is the entertainment. Let's bring you a wrap of one of the major conversations that dominated the showbiz space during the week. Have a look. See the on me, the favor on me, the mercy that see. It's been a busy and uneventful week as far as the showbiz space is concerned. A major topic of interest was Nigerian gospel star Nathaniel Bassi's call on Guinean gospel ministers to write more songs in English to appeal to listeners across the globe.
The statement by the Tobechuku hitmaker got tongues wagging. Opinion within the gospel space was sharply divided. Sonny Badu disagreed with Nathaniel Bassi. When it's your time to shine, no matter the language you sing in, you will still shine. We've heard about Rebecca Malope. Mm -hmm. um, we Ghanaians don't know what she say. Moya wa, moya. Mm -hmm. Most songs we do listen to from South Africa, you sing do from Salif Keita. What he was trying to say, if you want to invade or go global, then change your language to English so that the world at large can hear you. But for me, once it's your time and you're well packaged, uh, you can get anywhere you need to. You don't necessarily have to sing in English. God, the bless me hit maker, Kwesio Ting, was on the same page with the Nigerian singer. The biggest three songs that have left African shores to hit the ends of the world um, are all in English. Peace, when sorrow mm -hmm. Jehovah sees, way back in mm -hmm. South Africa, Lionel Peterson. Yeah went global you are alpha and omega we worship you our god mm. second and the one doing the most right now is way maker miracle worker all are in english i'm saying and every person listening to me who is around gospel music will attest to the fact that our biggest songs that have left africa are not in our local dialects our local dialects are songs that are within our circle Gospel diva Celestine Donko disagreed. For an artist to go global, you need to market your song and target other spaces. But you see, one of the powerful things that gives you that global acceptance is your own people. How they receive your song, I'm telling you. Because if we are talking about language here, how about francophone countries? So English is absolutely an advantage, no doubt about it. But it is not the only factor. That will make an artist go global. Showbiz critic Bulldog is also not for the idea of gospel musicians writing more songs in English. Language shouldn't be a matter when we come when it comes to music. Mm. Is he talking about language? So what? it's not about the English no. in the songs. Look, we are too quick. We want to go outside. You have not even fed four or five million people in Ghana. The chunk of us speak our language. Mm -hmm. If we are able to feed the 33 million people he's talking about. Yeah. We will go international. Mm -hmm. We're Ghanaians. From the parts that we are, we have our own language. Crossing over with music, it's not, it's, language is the last, last of the boxes you're going to check. Mm. You do your research. All these Snoop Dogs and the Buster Rhymes and the 50 Cent or whatever you want to call them, they filled up their market before they went to the next level. To music executive and promoter Chrissy Ernest, the call to write more songs in English is apt. I think that is not a bad call. Because, Bella, if you work on now, every musician who is producing a music video now, if you do the song in local language, there's what we call the text that we put on the songs with the translations that we do. So the question then comes, if you're okay translating your song on screen, on the video, from uh, T to English, mm -hmm. so that anybody that is watching the music video in Kenya, Uganda, South Africa, America, can also have uh, the meaning, the full meaning of what you are thinking. Then there's nothing also wrong by singing the song in English directly. And so... Well, this event was held last night, Rhythms of Africa, where we know that this particular conversation dominated a number of news portals where people were saying that um, Nathaniel Bassi had no right to come and say that in Ghana. But I also would want to say that maybe he was right at a point because... He, he, he's right in every sense of it, Gordon. Even Absol in Ghana, mm -hmm. we say English is our formal language, yeah. though we have our local language. Mm -hmm. If you want to mm -hmm. go formal or global, you need to adapt. And you can't go and sing... Even if you want to do a tree song, let there be a subtitle of what you're saying in yeah. the song so others can relate to it. I agree with that, but I say 102%. Well, I think it also goes further to talk about the state of our entertainment industry in Ghana generally. generally. Compared to Nigeria, South Africa and other countries, they've gained so much ground when it comes to promoting their music. So even if it is local language, you would have an interest and want to sing. Make it appealing and exactly. exciting to others. But I personally love Sonny Badu's <laughs> The Things It'll Do For Me. Nobody can do. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, that is it for Weekend Central here on TV3. My name is Godwin Asideba. 
I am Grace Hamwajim, and thank you for spending your last 60 minutes with us. The Bulletin is on Facebook. In case you miss, please hop on our Facebook page at TV3 Ghana. Like, comment, and share. And also get to watch whatever new items that we brought for you. It is Sunday. Have a good time with your family and have a fantastic day. Bye-bye. Back here next time.